you guys. Got me a nice little fire going in here. I put like two pieces of wood chopped in half. They were probably an inch and a half to two inch diameter. And I used my axe over there, which I can't tell much what I'm looking at. I used my axe and a little hand saw and cut a piece of that wood about six inches long and then I chopped it in half, which I don't think that was necessary, but it made it start easier. It allowed me to build a nice little fire here. It's been burning. I mean, I only cut two pieces. Of course, I used a little tinder to start the fire, just a little. Little twigs, some of these little twigs over here. A cotton ball, little twigs, started the fire, and then I threw these on there. And it's been burning for quite a while now. I think uh, overall this stove is so easy to use. I tried putting a piece of tin foil over the top of it just to see what it would work. But it melted that in about a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. This was the tin foil. I went through that in about less than a minute and just melted it. Stuff turned look like it was butter. So that idea don't work. <laughs> I just wanted to see if it would melt, and it did. So uh, basically, got a nice fire going. This is the uh, Little Bug Senior. It's probably the best fire stove out there to me. To me. It's just, uh, it is, I think it weighs 19 ounces, which probably turns off some backpackers. But me personally, it's no big deal because I don't generally, uh, you can't use a wood stove in the park I'm in unless you're at a campground. So I guess maybe you could backpack into one of the campsites. But those big pieces of wood, little chunks about an inch and a half, I think they're about two inch diameter. They're burning like crazy. And uh, I'm not sure how long this has been going, but I'd say a good 10 minutes. Long enough to have boiled your water and boil some coffee, anything you wanted, because it only takes about four to five minutes to boil something. Now this is not some giant flame. I hadn't tried to build it up to anything big. I just thought, that is so easy. Two little pieces of wood. And uh, you could stack up that stuff in 10 minutes. You could have enough wood to burn for hours, I'd say. I got a little wood pile over there. I got me a little chopping block here. And another one over there. And a little pile of wood there. And just, you could see out there, there's stacks of wood. But I walked to the front yard. I went up to the mailbox and back. And on the way back, I picked up wood that was laying down on the pathway from my, on the drive basically and this pile of wood there is it I mean that's a lot of wood to fall down just because it was a storm and there were several pieces laying in the drive I just picked them up now that's fresh wood I would assume that could have been rotten and maybe that's why it broke off but to me if that much wood's available for free in a matter of basically just walked back from the mailbox and picked it up and then I only used two pieces of it See the piece that's sitting there? I cut two pieces of it, six inches long each, split them in half and threw them in here, and they're still burning. And frankly, they look like they'll go for another 15, 20 minutes, but I'll wait and see. But the fire itself, it's hotter than heck right here. I can hardly hold my hand there. The tarp ain't getting too hot. No, it's not hot up here. That little two foot height makes a big difference. So I don't know, I think if I were really going to cook and make a good fire, a big fire at all, I would raise this tarp way up or either take the top off. But even if it were raining, you could have this fire right here. So it's so muddy where I'm at. Look at this mud. I stacked some wood right here just to put my feet on so it wouldn't be so wet. Anyway, I got this little axe over there. Bought on, uh, I think, Amazon for maybe $25. I got a really nice axe. I didn't bring it out. I thought I'd use this one just to see, but I didn't even need the axe, honestly. I used it to split wood instead of a knife. 
but boy, it's too easy. <laughs> I mean, it's effortless, basically. A little axe or hatchet. Uh, see, the flame's going down to coals. It's still some flame, but that's quite a nice fire, really. I'm amazed how, uh, with a cotton ball and this little stove, you have no difficulty starting a fire in the wind or no wind. The rain would be your big issue as long as you can find a tarp or shelter and you could have a fire. Once it's lit, I guess, I don't know. Rain probably would put it out if it was raining hard, yeah. But uh, if you put a skillet on top of it or a pan, the rain wouldn't even affect it, honestly. So as long as you got your pan on top and rain and wouldn't go in it, it would stay burning even if it was in the rain. Once you have it lit, you get it lit, put the pan on, and the rain's not going to affect it, I don't think. I may try that one day when we got a rainy day and see. But to me, right now, it's really going good. Well, this is this is Ted hanging out in my hammock here, enjoying a good old little fire. I didn't even cook anything. I just wanted to chop a couple of pieces of wood and see, basically, to find out, you know. Would it burn for quite a while? Would this wood burn even though it's just freshly fall off a limb, fell off a tree this morning or last night? And uh, the wind blew it. I guess, you know, it could have broken, because, but it's not rotten at all. It's white inside. So in my opinion, that kind of wood, it burns really good. And I think because I split it into two pieces instead of just one solid, it helped. It helped it get started anyway. Once it started, you could probably just put a solid piece on and it would go good. Like right now with these ashes, like this, I think you could put a solid chunk on there and it would go good. Uh, I don't even know if my phone will sit on this stand. It might. Let's see, where's the camera at? I'm going to try to set it down and just see what it does, what it's looking at. Not looking at nothing. No, it's not going to look at what I want it to look at. So, I can't, it actually tips down when I use the stand. So, uh, that's not going to work. Well, as far as I can tell, that's all I need to make a video of today. I'm going to stand up and show the hammock. Here it is. From here. It's a very nice campsite. Nice. I like this. It's out in the back of my house. But this is the saw I have. Nice saw. B-A-H-C-O. Baco. That thing is sharp. I'm talking sharp. It cuts very good. And my axe is right here. I'd say, I don't know, that looks like about 24 inches long. It's a tomahawk. Nice. It's a very nice axe. I mean, for $25, it's all you need to camp with, that's for sure. I bought a really nice axe that's a high quality blued steel. Really nice. Sharper than this one by far. Much more quality with a hickory handle. But uh, I'm just trying this one out. I actually like this one pretty well. So, you can see the campsite. Got my hanging, hanging ups here. Got a nice setup here with this wraps around the tree. This came with the hammock, and I added the carabiners and these rings so you can just adjust your hammock. It takes about 10 seconds to adjust your whole thing. <laughs> a minute, you can put the whole thing up pretty much once you got your sight. I've got these snake skins. So if you take it down, these slide over the whole hammock. And also you can put it up if you want to and protect it from water or rain. But as long as you got a tarp, that's probably unnecessary. I might walk around here the other side. The sun's out pretty bright. So you can see this site is a nice, nice shade right now. Uh, the sun's where it is. 
but uh, I got a creek over here. Not much of one, but it is a creek. There's actually water there. With my water filter, I guess it'd be even drinkable. This yard is like very mushy, swampy. This street is Pumpkin Swamp Road. And it uh, does get swampy out here. But really, it's mushy feeling. There's grass in the yard. The yard has grass, so it's not a big deal. But if you go to try to lawnmower this place when it's mushy, it ain't going to work. Lawnmower will spin. I found that out. <laughs> but you can see I got a mushy spot under my hammock. Uh, this sun may help dry it up. It takes a few days to dry out the area. And this spring, I'm going to plant, plant some grass seed over here and try to get it to grow in this area. But actually, I could always just throw down anything. But I use this spot a lot. Uh, intend to camp out here and sleep it in the hammock and see what it's like and such. But that's where I'm at. And I guess this video is long enough. This fire is still kicking. And boy, it's hot right Oh, man. You could easily boil water on that coal. I'll just let this burn out, though, I guess, and see what happens. This stove is uh, really nice, I have to say. I don't know. I thought about buying other ones to try them out, but really, like most people say, you can just dig a little fire pit or build one on the ground if you wanted. What's nice about this one is when you get done, you take the stove in and underneath the stove, the ashes are collected into a, I had a pan right now, I have what is a, a uh, stainless steel screen, but what is it? It's a uh, steamer, something you can buy at Walmart. I got this one at the thrift store, but it opens up and it becomes a steamer. You put your vegetables on it and it'll hold it out of the water. And it keeps the fire about a half inch to an inch off the ground. So once it burns out, it's nothing but the soot. And I can pick it up and throw the soot somewhere else or either let it sit right here. It ain't going to hurt, but uh, whatever gets on the ground is going to be very minimal. And the fire is kept up above the ground and air circulating under it. So it's a nice addition. It's not necessary for this fire. I thought I would try it and see how it works in the long run. I'm going to try it today. It's, it's just running away. You can't really see it. But it's not the same diameter as the outer stove. I've seen other stoves that have, uh, like the Tricaldera, it has a flaming pan that goes inside of it that holds your fire up off the ground. Well, this is the same idea, except it was almost free. <laughs> so this stove really is a nice stove. I like it. It has a nice carrying case. The Little Bug Senior. L-I-T-T-L-B-U-G dot com. So if you're interested in one of these, I think it was around $58, $57, $56 in that range. And uh, if you're not happy with it, they guarantee it your satisfaction. They have a smaller version. It weighs 5 ounces. I believe it's 5, 5.1 maybe. This one is 19 ounces. It's a sturdy stove, and I think it's a good thing because you're burning fire in a stainless steel stove. It comes nice and silver, and it turns this color, which I can't say. is more of a copper-looking color to me. But basically, it'll never look the same as it did new, and none of the stainless steel stoves will. So that's basically where we're at in the hammock. I got half of the uh, netting lifted up over the ridge line, so I could lay out here and not be bothered with the netting and I can sit because this makes a nice chair and I lowered it a couple of inches so that now basically it's a very nice chair for me and I can rock in it I could lean back in it if I wanted and uh, oh this fire is still hot man there's no smoke none just coals, but it is hotter than heck. You could boil water on there right now. I bet it wouldn't take five minutes. But those 
two little pieces of wood on top of a few twigs I put in the bottom. I did not build it up into some massive 